Good morning. Welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben. We're off to a fresh start. I'm glad you're joining us today. Uh, we have an exciting week coming up because our representative from Lutheran Church Extension Fund is going to be with us as we're working through our ministry plan and looking at and evaluating how we can best move forward as a congregation, looking at all the things that we do and can we do them better? Uh, what things aren't we doing? Those kinds of things. So Billy is going to be a part of that process. So be arriving later in the week, be here through the weekend and uh, leaving early next week. But we're glad to have him with us. He'll be preaching on Sunday and uh, helping some of the teams, the ministry teams that are working on various projects right now. So we're excited to have him with us. And I'm glad you're with us here this morning. We have a number of people here, uh, Beth, Terry, John, Jan, Bob, um, I'm guessing Diana is there as well. <sighs> Excellent. Good morning. Let's dig into God's Word. If you pull out your YouVersion Bible app, the verse of the day is Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 10. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Now, this is just the beginning. This is the introduction to this letter that Paul has written to the Philippian congregation. And so he is, he's buttering them up. He's getting them prepped for what he's going to be talking to them about. But he also has uh, a, a warning. He also has just a general outline of where he's going to go. That's what we have before us in this letter. And it's a good outline. So we know, as they did as well, that fallen human nature, it produces uh, counterfeit notions of love, you could say. And so Paul has a prayer. He has a prayer for them and for us that love would abound. But not just more and more like quantity of love, but the quality of the love, which he then says comes from knowledge and all discernment producing a quality of love. And so love, the way he's using it here, it does not mean that we're indulging in our appetites or that there are these empty sentiments of love like pleasantries. We depend on God's revelation in his word to know what love is. And so we go to his word to see what this love looks like so that we can present and abound in a better quality of love, not just a uh, mere quantity of nice sentiments. So then he, he has this statement to approve what is excellent. Knowledge and discernment, they allow us to test. They allow us to recognize the things that we're looking at as, as valuable. And the things that we are to find value in are truth and mercy. But they don't come just by looking at something. They come from knowledge. They come from discernment. In, in a sense, you could say study. But the whole point is that love would abound so that. He drops this so that in there, this purpose clause. So that you're ready at the day of Christ. It is all about being prepared for the day of Christ. This is our mission as the church. One, that we're prepared you know, we, we're, we're centered in on ourselves. We're, we're aware of this in many ways, that we're focused on ourselves. So our salvation is part of it, but the church has a mission to bring it to more and more people as well because we care about more and more people. And that we and they are prepared at the day of Christ. Paul then continues this introduction of his letter to the Philippians 
because he's expressing his prayer, he's expressing his appreciation and his yearning for these fellow believers. So we take a cue from him. Are we concerned for our own salvation? Yes, but it's locked up because of the cross of Christ. So then we follow in Paul's books. We follow his example of yearning for fellow believers and for those that do not yet believe. For us who claim to be Christians, for those who claim this Christian faith, I pray that we can see, by contrast, how far our thoughts and our passions and our efforts miss the focus of the Christian life. We miss the focus, but God still welcomes our prayers. And so this is why we pray that God would lift us up to embrace the truth of what his love really is, not what our sentiments of love make our understanding of love into. But confident that God has completed this work, that he has completed the good work that he began in our justification through Jesus. Christ's righteousness abounds abundantly and it's available. It's available to us through his word. It's available to those around us. I, I like how Paul starts his letters. This one is just wonderful because as you can see, he, he, he is acknowledging their state of things, but he's, he's saying there is a goal and it's the law of Christ. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we live our lives desiring to abound in this love. But our counterfeit forms of love, they seek for quantity of sentiment instead of to seek out what true love looks like. Help us to look to the cross. Help us to see the value that you placed on us. And to see this excellent way and to seek to live it in all the moments that we encounter before you return. We pray all this in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessings to you today. I hope this kickstarts your day with, with joy, encouragement as we spend time in God's Word. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. I look forward to seeing you for another Live for Five and tomorrow for our midweek Lenten service. Have a wonderful day in Christ. I'll see you soon.